I'm going to read the final words from a book by John Hargrave called The Confession of the Kibbo Kift. John Hargrave was the guru um, of my mother and father and uh, they met in his movement. So you could say uh, very literally that um, uh, I owe my existence to him having introduced my parents and similarly half of your existence Philippa is due to him. This is a piece that I read at uh, my mother's funeral by the grave um, and it seems appropriate because I understand the theme of dying um, is part of what you're doing at this festival. So let me just read this piece. Let each draw apart for a time a time to strive and a time to be at rest, to gather up strength to be enfolded into the earth. The leaders must draw away into darkness, each one alone, into the Kilchbid, the circle of the world, into Kibnokhed, the cauldron of Keredwin, mother of seeds. The cheerful ones of the Ark of the World, the silent proficients, the men of complete discipline, draw apart for a time from each other and from all men to be alone in the cool of the evening to be swallowed up in the shadows. Everyone will come at last into the ship of the earth, but these go now while they yet live to open themselves, to unlock the spirit in timelessness, to receive the impress of the quiet world where no man is, where consciousness is not, where words are dispelled and thoughts hold no argument but run ahead softly in supple forms, darkly. Ah, no, no, they do not lose themselves. This is not the hemlock drink of the soul. This is the time and the place of remaking, where the exhausted mind is laid aside, entering the gloom, emptied of the echoes of broken thought and mental chatter carried over from the world of day. And here the whole being is cleansed of the close associations, the nearnesses, the hot imprint of other personalities encountered in the day's work. This is the coming together again, alone, in silence. This is the right and necessary retirement. I shall go where the great trees stand, deep into the half-light of the woods, whelming upon the giant bodies of the beach. I know the place where the afterglow shines like a pale halo upon a hill, and there the ash and the elm take hold upon the earth, flinging their strength into the sky. And over the summit of the hill on slanting ground, a crab tree and a crooked thorn crouch and clutch each other. I shall come round them uneasily and pass under the ash and the elm with an intaking of breath, and so down the valley to the track that runs into a pine wood, where the darkness closes in and the feet tread noiselessly, and the lungs are filled with the scent of the hanging curtains, the needled carpet and the cones. Neither to look nor to hear, nor to think, but only to receive. After the work of the day, a little staggeringly, blundering without faltering through the high weeds, neither asleep nor awake, but open. Not as one who flees the sharp, flat outlines of the daytime, but as one mysteriously dead, quick now to the wide friendliness of the fields and the sudden unaccountable fears of bracken dell and chalk bit, of softly cushioned antheap underfoot, of blossoming elderberry bush melting into the bewildering dusk, looming again pale and almost colourless. Tread softly over the grass that springs out of the blood and bodies of old heroes of the Icknield Way long since gone to dust. Back to the place of dwelling, to the encampment. Plunge then into the deep sleep that knows no fitful dreaming. The end of the confession of the Kibbo Kift.